guys, I have found a lead on some Jeep parts that I've been needing. Reed Racing, Flat Top Knuckle, Sky Off Road, High Steer Arm. Plus some extra Dana 44 parts. He doesn't need those. Especially when you're running 38s. I'm going to be breaking stuff. So, check it out. So I feel like I scored on this deal. Check it out. Reed Racing, Flat Top Knuckle, the Sky Off Road, High Steer Arm. It's got the four stud mounting. Got some spacers that uh, I'm gonna see if Alex can use them on his Bronco to run the H1 wheels. <clears throat> Got some working calipers, fresh set of brake pads, the rotors look real good, so should have everything I need, um, minus the drag link to get my front end put together properly and get the brakes working good. And then I'll have some spare hubs and axle shafts, um, you know, just in case I break. Or not just in case, for when I break, let's be honest. All right, first thing I gotta do is get some lights up in here because it's just kind of dark. We're gonna do that, get some lights up in here, and start tearing this guy down. All right, got the lights in, now I'm ready to do some work. So first thing we'll do is take that tie rod off and I'm going to pull that cover off and see uh, if there's anything good in there and then um, I'll just start pulling one side at a time apart. This one's got two different hubs on it so um, I'll do my best to try to explain the difference. This side is you know the typical worn style. Um, <coughs> And then this style is called the Selectro. This is pretty cool looking. These gears are junk. Alright, so you have to excuse me earlier it said this was a worn but it looks like it's a mile marker. Um, but nonetheless, it's this style. First thing I gotta do is pull out these little Allen screws and what that'll do is allow me to get um, my socket in there to pull that off. Um, plus sometimes uh, there's a little bit of stuff to take apart be behind the uh, Old dial, I don't know what it's called. The selector. Anyway, I'll get it apart, and if you've never seen a hub, I will show you kind of how they engage. 
So one nice thing about this coming from a wheel and rig versus like a junkyard is all the bolts come out nice and easy. Because when you're wheeling, you inevitably break stuff and you have to service things, whatever. So you have it apart like a million times. Um, so yeah, all the bolts just come, come out nice and easy, which is great. Um, but on the other hand, when it's a wheel and rig, sometimes they get pretty dirty. This one seems pretty clean, so that's nice. You can see in here, kind of, this uh, kind of tapers in, slides in or whatever. On the back side of the selector, there's these springs. These are kind of springy. And they slide on these. So as you turn the selector, it pushes this little gear in and engages it to the axle. When you turn, push the pressure off the spring by turning it the other way, it disengages the hub. Um, so that's how you have selectable hubs in this mile marker style, this particular style. There's a few other styles. Um, I've got warns on the Jeep now, so if I pull it, I will be pulling those apart. I can show you kind of the difference um, on that. But on the mile marker, this particular mile marker style, so those springs slide on this little cam gear, push that in and engage, engage the hub. All right, so I got the selectable hub part taken off. Um, now I got to get the actual hub off, which is um, part of the, the brake rotor is attached to it. Um, and it's got a special spindle nut. You need a special socket to pull that off. There are different sizes, so make sure you get one that's for Dana 44. The guys at Napa should be able to help you out with that um, if you don't know. And anyway, I just you get it in the right spot, slips on that nut, you just beat on it a little bit, and it comes right off. It's important to know is these are double nutted and it matters what nut goes in first. So let me uh, let me clean this off real quick. All right, like I was saying, um, there are two nuts on there and it matters which one goes on first. So this one goes on first. You can see it has a little stud on it. Um, so that'll go in, you'll torque that down um, to the required torque specs. Then, this washer goes on. You can see it's keyed. It'll go, um, there's a keyway on the spindle. So that'll slide on. These holes on here will line up, will line up on that uh, little stud on the first one. That locks it all into place. Then you will finish it off with the final nut and that sandwiches it all together so it won't come loose. This right here is the main reason I bought this axle. Re-racing knuckle. It's got the four bolt mounting. It's gonna make my steering awesome. One side down, one side to go. All right, so now I'll show you how the Selectro hubs work. You can see it as engage is counterclockwise, disengage is clockwise. Right now we are in the disengaged position. 
So, the selector knob is screwed, four screws to this outside sleeve here. Now when it's disengaged this way, you can see that this um, inside cam gear knot or tab is in this little notch on the outside selector turning thingy with my bob. So when you go to engage and you turn it counterclockwise, you can see it goes to there. And the other part of this is a spring. The spring goes in between the selector knob and this cam gear, and it's always put pressure on there. So when you turn it to engage, pops that cam gear in, and now you're in four-wheel drive. So that is how the Selectro hubs work. All right, guys, so the disassembly of uh, Dana 44 underneath my Jeep went really well. I've got the passenger side all tore apart. Um, it helps when, you know, you've been through it already once before. See here, I'm down to the bare inner C. So I'm gonna start putting on my high steer parts. I'll try to kind of show you what I'm doing as I go. Um, and then I'll also show you um, what the worn hubs look like on uh, this Dana 44. I don't think I'm gonna use those. Um, the spindle design is a little bit different. I'm not sure which one's better or worse. So I'll have to do some research. These are the ones that came on my Jeep. This is the hub design of my parts axle. These hubs, they look beefier than these, but maybe, I don't know which one's better. I'll have to look into it. This one uses bigger hardware, so it might be stronger. All right, here's a little side-by-side -side comparison of the Reed Racing flat top knuckle versus the factory Dana 44 non flat top knuckle. See, it already looks way beefier. There's a lot more metal to it. Plus, it's got this flat top that's machined and they actually put additional metal on the Reed Racing knuckle to accommodate a fourth bolt on the top the factory non-flat top knuckle there's no way to really safely attach a um, high steer arm on the top of it um, so this is going to be a nice upgrade Smash my finger a little bit. That's nice. So, I decided to go with the hubs that I had on the Jeep for three reasons. One, I have a matching set. So that other pair that came on the other axle are not matching, so um, it makes sense to keep the matching set. Number two, I don't have to take apart the driver's side. The only reason I take apart the driver's side is to swap out those hubs and that's just a lot of extra work so I'm not going to do that. And number three, Warren has been making off-road parts for a very long time. They know what they're doing so the Warren hub should be sufficient. The only thing I don't like about this design is they do stick out further um, than the other hubs. 
but not by a ton, so I think it'll be okay. Um, plus, it, it does seem like they have the same bearing size, so I'm not like downgrading really by using this hub style. So to show you how it works, So you can see it's got splines on the outside and the inside. These outside splines line up with the splines on the hub here. And then the inside splines line up on the axle. So basically this piece can connect the axle with the um, selectable hub this inside piece spins in there so it's not locked in there it is all right that goes in there like that much like the other hubs there are a set of springs that hold this guy this kind of gives it a little bit of pressure when you turn the selector you can see it pushes that out and that locks in the outside gear and the inside gear basically connecting the hub to the axle shaft making it live and you're in full -wheel drive. So the parts that I sent to Spokane instead of Boise were my one ton tie rod ends from Barnes Off Road. <coughs> they, uh, they're really beefy. They come with these uh, threaded bungs to go inside my DOM. Now the issue that I ran into was this is actually not inch and a half, it's inch and three eighths. So this inside diameter is seven eighths, not one inch. So it doesn't fit. So whoever pulled this in the yard kind of screwed up. Um, so what I ended up doing with my drag link is taking the one inch bit I'm drilling the end out to accept this bung, then I welded them in. It was a pain in the butt, but I got it to work. Um, anyway, um, got the steering kind of buttoned up now for now. It's uh, pretty beefy, I think. It should be sufficient to get me wheeling for now, and, and it'll be safe. Um, much safer than that hack job I did before. So on the next video, I will be pulling that uh, transfer case and show you all about the Ford Warner 1339. It's the original Quadratrack. It's kind of a cool transfer case with, uh, as far as some of its features, but then it's also kind of a sucky transfer case because of the lack of parts and that chain drive. So I've got two cases. I'll try to blow them both apart for you, show you how that thing works. The, the one that's in my Jeep right now has the mile marker part-time kit. I'm not sure about my spare case and whether it's got the uh, full-time unit or not, um, but hopefully I can show you the difference between the two. Anyway, hope you like this video. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe. I'll see you next time.